listening to episode 78 of Mito Life Radio. I'm your host, Matt Blackbird. Today I'm interviewing Mike and Andrea of Fancy Farm Skincare. They created a animal-based skincare line that is incredible. It's tallow-based, so they have a really, really awesome tallow soap and a tallow body and face cream, uh, both an unscented version and then one that contains a Bulgarian rose extract. This is a fun show because we talk about a variety of different conditions. A lot of people send in Q&A questions, and so we go through quite a bit of Q&A questions regarding acne, we talk about the pH of the skin. Uh, we talk about when to apply the products. Uh, we talk about eczema quite a bit, anti-aging uh, toners and their thoughts on skin toners, dry skin, just a lot of great advice in this show. And I input a lot of my thoughts as well. So here is Andrea and Mike, enjoy. All right, I'm here with Michael and Andrea. Welcome to the show. Hi, Matt. Thanks for having us on. We we uh, we always throw your podcast on uh, whenever we go on a long drive, so yeah. it's it's really awesome to be on here. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's a really good way to uh, multitask because driving can be such a monotonous uh, thing. Mm-hmm. So to just yeah. learn while you're driving it's is definitely, awesome. Yeah, <laughs> definitely a game changer when it comes to a long drive. So <laughs> really happy we stumbled across it. That's awesome. Yeah, we actually drove, it was like a 12 hour round trip to get our uh, German Shepherd puppy. And uh, the Adam Bergstrom interview I did, the most recent one saved us. It was like three hours long, but it's like every minute Adam has like a zinger, like something that's just like, whoa, yeah. like I, I wouldn't imagine that. <laughs> it yeah, fun. it really keeps your, your attention going and your brain stimulated because driving is such a like a monotonous you know, yeah. thing when you're just driving down the road and doing nothing other than, you know, paying attention. It's just so monotonous. So it really helps keep your brain engaged and going. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys own a fancy farm skincare and um, we met each other through Instagram and uh, I ended up trying some of your tallow soap and was just blown away. And I was telling you on the phone uh, before we recorded that I have trouble finding good soap um like dr bronner's is like okay a lot of people use that Mm -hmm. but even at Mm -hmm. the local health food store here there's not there's not many good options for soap i just want like a few ingredients and that's what i love about your soap it's like is it two ingredients two yeah Yeah. that's it it's tallow and uh water and that's it and we we use lye obviously because without the lye you'd be just lathering a bunch of fat all over your skin so the lye is actually what turns fat into soap. Um, that's uh, that's the confusion a lot of people have. They they see the word lye and they panic. But the yeah. truth is, you can't have soap without lye, mm-hmm. and you can't have lye without soap. So the, in the after product, uh, when the soaps cure, it's a it, it's usually cures between four to six four to six weeks. Mm-hmm. Yep. And um, the aftermath is a bar of soap with with no lye in it whatsoever. The curing product actually gets rid of the lye as it reacts with the oils and the soap. Interesting. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The one thing I noticed, I, I have a habit of like burning my eyes in the shower cause I'll lather myself up and then like touch my face. And I noticed yeah. your yeah. soap doesn't do that as much. Like it's mm-hmm. not like a burning sensation. It's pretty cool. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. very soothing. Um, yeah. There's just so many crazy ingredients allowed in soap that uh, the FDA somehow just allows in and yeah. it's, it's really a problem for a lot of people because you know mainstream soaps you know like Pantene Pro-V not to name anything but uh there's all these you know these 30 ingredients 30 ingredients that even some are linked to to even cancer I mean it's it's crazy so the, yeah less is more definitely when it comes to soap yeah, well said. I've even seen that in supplements because I uh, came from like the biohacking nootropic world and I used to take supplements that have like 
50 ingredients. It's like, wow, that's that's way too much <laughs> at one time. Like, yeah. Even and it like almost misses ingredients. the point. Exactly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it almost misses the point of like what a supplement should be. Like we often see that um, in skincare, you know, there's like 30 ingredients and it's it's mm-hmm. like it just misses the point of, of what skincare should be. It should be simple. It should be nourishing. It should be minimal without all these added added you know preservatives chemicals synthetic ingredients things like that Mm -hmm. yeah definitely i think it's probably a proprietary thing because that's a big thing on a um whether it's maker of a supplement or skincare line it's like oh let's make this hard to copy and so i think that's a big reason why people use so many ingredients (laughs) Mm -hmm. yeah exactly and the funny thing is tallow it's actually you you can't can't patent patent tallow because it's a whole food so that's kind of why I think a lot of skincare, uh, a lot of mainstream companies, they don't really talk about tallow yet. It is actually used in mainstream skincare. It'll be on the label. But because it's not patentable, they don't really make noise about it because if, and a lot mm-hmm. of the times it's where all the nourishment is coming from, from the mainstream, yet they don't put any, they don't shed any light on it. Um, yeah, so I thought that was interesting. That's cool. Yeah, my first introduction to tallow was... I think like four years ago, um, I got uh, some company sold it in a little glass. I think it was Epic, the company that makes little energy bars. Oh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Epic Tallow. Yeah, it was pretty good and uh, really like gamey. And I was cooking my, I was just doing like beef and rice bowls for like a year, recovering from veganism. And uh, it was great. And just <laughs> stacked that with some butter and it was just a super high fat, high protein meal. Was before That's the way you get over eat. veganism. Just, just right? fat and meat and butter. <laughs> Bacon. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Yeah, I think the carbs are often missing, but it's like just doing that fat change to like switch over to saturated fat because you've been doing so many unsaturated fats. That can be – I think mm-hmm. that's where a lot of people see the benefits of paleo is just with doing that oil change in their body. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I remember I, I started out my health journey. I was actually vegan for a year. Um and I remember the night I was just craving a burger so badly. I, I woke up at like four in the morning. I walked across the street to the first bar that was open and, and I had a burger and it was just like, it was the best burger I've ever had. And then I just went back to sleep and got the best night's sleep ever. And I just, ever since then, I sort of went off veganism. And, and then I dove into the whole carnivore way of, way of eating. I went to the total opposite side yes. of the spectrum because I was so hyped on animal nutrients and fat soluble vitamins and and uh just the power of animal based diets so i dove head first into that that way of eating so i was i was actually carnivore for a whole year and then i i sort of burnt out from that i got very moody very irritable and i couldn't really manage my stress i actually think i developed an anxiety disorder thinking back because i was just so fixated on what i should be eating and it was such a limiting diet that I think I would like feel guilty just if my you know parents came and visited and we had to eat out and I ate something other than meat, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so uh, I did that. I, I switched from the carnivore mm-hmm. diet to um, balanced. yeah, balanced, more like what you're doing, where you sort of take the animal based nutrients, but you see it as just a piece of the puzzle, and you really still need the fruits and the roots and all that. So that's kind of what I'm doing now. And I'm, I'm loving it. I'm finally feeling like I'm not on a diet anymore. And my diet doesn't like rule my health. It's so nice feeling, you know, not restricted, being able to eat what I what I want. <laughs> Just a high yeah. quality version of it. That's awesome. Yeah, a lot of the Q&A questions we got were about like eczema and psoriasis. And I grew up We'll we'll get into that in depth later. But I grew up with eczema and acne. And Mm -hmm. Uh, from what I've learned now, it's like, those are really driven by stress. I mean, there's some stuff topically you can do, Mm -hmm. but I had an eczema flare up a couple of years ago, just being in a really bad business relationship and just a lot of stress. And my acne came back. I hadn't had it for 15, 20 years and it came back in full bore, um, on my arms. It's like, Whoa, this is, uh, I mean, my body is saying like, change your life right now. (laughs) I mean, it's like, yeah. You know, it kind of tells you. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. There's there's only so much a cream can do at the end of the day. Um, I we we really think it's 
it, you have to address all aspects of your life. I think a cream is just a piece of the puzzle. And if, if there is a skin is a, if there is a skincare company, you know, telling you otherwise that their cream is going to be able to change your skin and, you know, yeah. do some miracle work, it's most likely just propaganda because it really is just one piece of the puzzle. Um, you have to look at your stress. Like you said, you have to look at all areas of your life, your diet and, you know, change it, change it accordingly. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, Andrea, did you do the carnivore diet with them or? Did you have the same journey? No. <laughs> I I tried veganism for a week and I was like, this is just not happening. <laughs> this it, it's, it was just too difficult to find options. And yeah, I just I I just felt like um very hungry all the time. And I when I finally went back and started eating meat again, it was like my brain woke up again like a computer. So I, I've just been always doing a balanced diet. And I make sure she stays away from mm -hmm. the whole poofas and uh, yeah, <laughs> give her Sheila G and vitamin E. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I know a few vegans, like raw vegans, that do low poofa, high fruit, um, and some saturated fat from, from coconuts. And their brain, their memories mm -hmm. on it, they're really sharp and smart. I think it really? can work for a very small amount of people. But those amino acids, just like you guys said, the light bulb, that was... That was my bison burger after raw veganism, and it's just like, wow, those amino yeah. acids just light up the brain and those fat-soluble vitamins that you didn't have. Yeah, it's interesting that you can actually make it work. It just seems like, yeah, like you said, there has to be a lot of planning and mm -hmm. and knowing exactly where to get this specific nutrient mm -hmm. from, from what yeah. specific food. It seems like a lot. Well, it seems like it would be pretty tough, but <laughs> doable. Yeah. Yeah. The amino acids for me are the hardest thing, but from people I've interviewed, like Adam Bergstrom is kind of like the vegetarian. And he was saying like, there's keto acids, which are like uh, incomplete amino acids that combine with ammonia and make uh, essential amino acids. So those are found in like tomatoes, potatoes, and there are certain plants that have been studied to have actual partial amino acids that when they combine with your ammonia, they make. So that's kind of interesting. I mean, I, I just mm. thought of potatoes as a carb source, but now, mm. I mean, I'll eat potatoes with butter and like, wow, I feel pretty satiated. <laughs> it just doesn't feel like Wow. <laughs> Does it matter the source of potato or like what type of potato or is it just? I do the russet white. I, uh, I think mm -hmm. the white potatoes are generally better. Um, I just had a friend I, uh, tell me that her doctor, uh, it's actually Dr. Cowan prescribed her white potatoes for a problem and it helped. Um, so wow. yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> food is really really interesting stuff there's so much beneath the surface <laughs> yeah yeah there's a lot so um so how did you guys get into that i think uh we had a question about that like how did you guys get interested in um skincare and did you start this together it was kind of like you guys came together or how did that all work well i was i kind of had the idea for fancy farm mm. and my girlfriend helped me really get it off the ground and uh, she helped me with making the creams mm -hmm. and helped me in the business aspect of it, shipping out orders. So um, I really see her as a co-owner as well. And, um, yeah, I got into it pretty much because I was so into diet at the time. And I think I have to give credit to my carnivore diet days that really taught me to source food. Um, it really taught me to go for high quality food, you know, contact your local farmer, get quality milk, quality eggs, quality beef. And I, I was, it really made me question like what I saw on labels. And every time I went into the grocery store, or the drug store to, 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 you know, get a face cream or, or a lotion or something like that, mm -hmm. I would see some crazy ingredients on the back and it would, you know, the front of the label would say all natural and the back would be like nothing that resembles natural, you know, like 30 plus ingredients that you couldn't pronounce, um, parabens, preservatives and uh yeah so i realized if i wanted to take control of that whole aspect of health like what we're putting on our skin and what we're using in the bathroom that i have to sort of take it into my own hands and just make my own so i started making uh tallow face creams mm -hmm. um i remember the first time i did it uh, i went to union square a farmer's market in manhattan and i bought these uh these uh, essential oils, these really high quality essential oils, and I paired it with tallow, and I whipped up some cream, and I it was just like an amazing 
uh, moisturizing experience like nothing I've ever experienced before because I get crazy dry skin in the winter, especially, um, you know, on the East Coast, the winters are like brutal here. Um, so I suffered from really, really dry skin, which would sometimes even turn red and rashy. Um, but this tallow, it, it was really just like an, an mm -hmm. awesome experience because it's the first thing I tried that soaked into the skin completely um, and didn't leave like a residue. It was whenever I tried plant based creams, it would always leave like a film on my skin and it just felt like there was something there, whereas the tallow really, really soaked into the skin. So that was the first time I used it. And I think ever since then, I knew there was something special about tallow and I, I knew I could help people with eczema and extreme dry skin and sensitive skin because there really is no option right now when you go to the grocery store on like food where you can source it from a local farmer or, you know, get a, get a high quality version of it. There's no there's no store that sells fresh handmade creams, you know, made that week with high quality ingredients. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I think like at farmers markets, because I grew up for 30 years in uh, San Diego, California, and I went to various farmers markets all around San Diego County. And uh, usually there would be a booth with like goat milk soap. And I always, yeah, I always awesome. gravitated towards that. And mm -hmm. I actually have to, we have to learn how to make some from our Sanan goats here. That'd be uh, fun. But um, uh, just for personal use, I wouldn't sell it. Have too many things going on. <laughs> But, yeah. but, but yeah, I think the animal based like fats, um, both internally and externally, um, mm -hmm. I mean, once I started upping my raw milk consumption, um, and, and the raw goat milk, especially that's where my skin started to get really good. And even, I mean, counterintuitively like ghee and butter, um, I really? just noticed that those fat soluble vitamins and animal fats, like really help to, um, smooth out my skin. Cause I, I grew up having rashes and red skin too um mostly from like pools i go to like pool parties at friends houses and oh yeah just go in the j jacuzzi or the mm -hmm. pool just that chlorine would just thrash me i'd literally be itching all night even if i yeah. showered i'd still have it it would like the chlorine would like go under my skin and just it would take like half a day to detox that or whatever wow. um but little side note, since learning about that, actually vitamin C is a good mitigation for uh -huh. uh, for chlorine. And uh, yeah, I would I wouldn't recommend ascorbic acid, but whole food. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, like uh, bee pollen, right? Or yeah, yeah, or um, camu camu amla. Uh, I mean, just local seasonal fruit. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, a lot of people have reactions to the chlorine. That's like a good sign yeah. like maybe it's time to get a shower filter maybe it's time mm -hmm. to like upgrade your soap and all that stuff you know oh yeah the whole shower filter thing and what we're bathing in is is so crucial too and it's so overlooked too um and it's such a simple fix that can really cause significant increase in you know your overall well-being just by doing that little thing of changing your shower filter mm -hmm. um yeah. but uh, yeah we absolutely absorb everything we put on our skin when you go into like a chlorine pool and it's it's really it's really amazing how we we absorb everything we put on our skin like yeah. we were looking into it the other day and there's even a birth control patch apparently that you put on your you put this patch mm -hmm. on you and you know it causes women to not be able to reproduce and it just goes to show the effectiveness of things that you put on your skin like even the nicotine patch and Things like that. So I, I think people don't make that connection that what they put on their skin is completely absorbed, no mm -hmm. different than as if they ate it. And uh, even, you know, sunscreens now and skin brightening creams and you, the list goes on. It's just, it's, it's really, really deceiving. I'm really glad you brought that up. Um, while we're walking the dog, I was kind of thinking about this call and this interview we we're going to do. And I was thinking about that transdermal aspect and remembering back to when I had like uh just pretty bad acne in like junior high school and high school and I went to the dermatologist and he prescribed me some type of cream it wasn't Accutane or, or it was like a I think it was retinol uh, like a like a synthetic mm -hmm. vitamin A uh retin A I think it was called something like mm -hmm. retin something <laughs> is it and, uh, on topically uh-huh yeah oh really okay yeah, and it, it kind of helped. 
probably just because I was so vitamin A deficient. I mean, I think like retinol deficiency is huge just because people think butter is going to clog their arteries and cause heart disease and all that stuff. I mean, just yeah. the yeah. amount of margarine people are eating and fake butter and stuff. You know, I, my vegan days, I was eating that vegan butter. I uh, can't remember. It was like vegetable oil based. Vegetable oils, right. And then... <laughs> Jeez. So, Jeez, that stuff is not good. Yeah. Yeah, and I was just thinking, mm -hmm. like, you see, like, uh, vitamin E in a lot of um, skincare, and then vitamin A, like, re synthetic retinol, unfortunately, is used for uh, acne, uh, mm -hmm. acne remedies. Um, I don't really see, like, D and K too much, but recently I got, mm -hmm. like, some copper serums that are, like, Washington, super, super expensive. Just kind of, I like to experiment sometimes with weird stuff. But I mean, you have zinc-based sunscreens, which isn't good mm -hmm. for because uh, that competes with copper. So anyway, so much. Just the transdermal oh, thing yeah. is interesting for sure. Um, I used a nicotine yeah. patch once because I like tobacco and didn't really feel anything. I'm like, I'm gonna stick with cigars. <laughs> you didn't feel anything at all. <laughs> yeah, not really. I don't. I don't know why. Maybe my body just didn't react to it. But uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, but what you put on your skin is definitely absorbed into your body. It's it's crazy stuff, and people don't really even think about that. And then when you think of the fact that like men use, you know, six six products in the bathroom on average, and women use about twelve, um, and each of those products mm -hmm. have like thirty different ingredients, and then they use them, you know, a couple times a day. Yeah. And then you think about how they're using them daily, monthly, and then you know it's just. You can see how it all adds up to these, you know, on synthetic chemicals just seeping into your skin every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've had episodes on like uh, estrogen and people think it's a female hormone, but it's actually a stress hormone like progesterone is the real female hormone. I interviewed like Jessica Ash and um, some really uh, awesome women that understand like women's hormones, and, like how to re recover from like first both birth control syndrome I had an episode on that and various things wow. and what you just said with the all the products and women get hit with double or more um oh, all yeah. those like phytoest or uh, synthetic estrogens right like xenoestrogens they're called um yeah yeah those paraben, estrogen I is a, a type of estrogen mm -hmm. and parabens are all commonly used in skin yeah. care and mm -hmm. uh i think it's a study done in like 2004 found that there's five different traces in uh, in breast tissue of 19 out of 20 women of parabens. Because it stays in your system Because it stays longer. in your system. Parabens, <laughs> when you put it on your skin and it sinks in, it actually stays there for a very long time. So, the, that I mean, that's pretty staggering. Out of 19 out of 20 women had five different traces of, of parabens in, in their body. And like you said, I, I think it's because they use double the amount of product and whether, you know, the, the moisturizer, the toner, the There's hairspray, the, the cleanser, the eye cream. It's like they, they get hit the in lotion. every direction. The perfume. The, makeup. the lipstick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't go, I go to like one mall a, a, a year or something, but I remember when I lived closer to malls and I'd walk through to get to the mall, like the, you know, the Macy's or whatever, and you walk through like the the skincare and the beauty section that I'm like holding my breath literally the entire time I'm walking through. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. <laughs> Hollister. I remember if you remember that store Hollister, it was like a perfume. You walk in and it was just like incident perfume. Like you're in a gas chamber. It's terrible. Yeah. That's the time to wear a face mask. Probably not for you know, this virus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> But that, yeah, that's I did not know that paraben is a form of um, synthetic estrogen. That's fascinating because that, mm -hmm. like, you guys probably see a lot of my research is about the lipofuscin accumulation, which is this like age pigment, which we got a lot of questions about, like white spots from sunbathing, skin problems in general. I truly believe that lipofuscinosis or age pigment or steroid is a big, a big cause of uh, skin. Uh, damage especially mm -hmm. from uh photo aging uh from the from ultraviolet light and yeah. i mean you just add excess iron pufas and parabens and right there you have the combo 
make life mm-hmm. of us skin so it's like yeah no wonder yeah. everyone's having skin issues yeah yeah exactly and the lack of vitamin e in the diet now too mm-hmm. um because you know vitamin e helps fight free radicals and mm-hmm. helps helps fight from the you know the harmful damage of the sun and the uv rays when it's applied mm-hmm. topically so mm-hmm. yeah that's that's the next product for us we want to come out with a, a vitamin e vitamin e based uh skin cream or that's awesome cream. yeah i'll definitely share it um so you have is it five products and your first was the soap and then you came out with uh was it three you have four Oh, two yeah. face creams just different sizes, right? Or- yeah, yeah, two face two creams with different sizes. Mm-hmm. We're taking it. We're taking it slow. We came out with one first, mm-hmm. and then we're getting the hang of like just running the business and how to how many we have to make and getting you know getting into the swing of things. And then we came out with the bear rub. Yeah, which is great because uh, it's unscented. Yeah, the bear mm-hmm. rub is our mm-hmm. unscented cream, and we mainly made that for people with eczema. And because mm-hmm. believe it or not, some people's skin are so sensitive that even pure ro- bulgarian rose oil from you know strek from the source you know century old ingredient even even that caused some redness in some people or some mild irritation so we said you know what, let's just make a pure mm-hmm. simple two ingredient cream that can be used on you know newborns babies mothers every everything because i think now with modern day stress and everyone has rashes and eczema and you really want something to just get out of the way of your skin's healing um, because the skin is, is amazing. I mean, it can really self-regulate itself. And if you just get out of its way and give it what it needs, it can do so much for itself. Um, and that's kind of what the mainstream skincare industry doesn't want you to believe. They want you to believe that mm-hmm. without their products, your skin is just never going to heal. Yeah. And you, you have to use their products. You know, you have to get three-step you have to wash every day, strip your natural oils off your skin. And, you know, your skin is just broken. It can heal itself, which is totally untrue. And your skin is, if you just give it what it needs, the nourishment it needs, it's so capable of healing and, uh, and you know, looking youthful and staying young and, and healthy. I fully agree. Yeah, I, I took a anatomy class and I remember... Um, learning about the skin we had to learn about all the different types of cells uh, in the in the epidermis the dermis all the layers of the skin mm-hmm. and it's so complicated i mean uh yeah. that's like why i went back to christianity because i'm like geez this is like you know fearfully and wonderfully made like truly complex like just our mm-hmm. skin is like so complicated yeah. it's like a whole world and uh yeah, you just give it what it needs and take away what it doesn't. And I'm a big fan of like whatever skin issue. I usually tell my clients like red light therapy, and there's multiple brands. You can even start with the chicken light uh, mm-hmm. fr- mm-hmm. from Home Depot or Ace Hardware, or Tractor Supply or whatever. 250 watt heat lamp, and then a uh, vitamin E internally, like high dose. It's, you know, shunned by Google for a reason because it works. And mm-hmm. when you combine those two. And maybe minimize just just mind your sun exposure for a little bit and just get in the saturated fats then like most people will see an improvement and i get yeah. questions about vitiligo and all these different skin conditions it's like you need to support the skin overall and it will help all those is kind of my perspective yeah definitely we, we get so many testimonials of people saying like um you know your product finally I finally found a product after spending so much money on mainstream skincare. Yeah. I finally found something that just mm-hmm. works and just does what it says it's supposed to do. Um, because yeah, the modern skincare industry is so deceiving and uh, really can lead people down a, a bad cycle of just buying and consuming and never actually experiencing long lasting nourishment. Mm-hmm. Well said. Yeah. Um, I, I like that you guys have the bear cream cause that it's interesting um, like with my old vitamin E, it was sunflower oil based. And even though all that vitamin E neutralized it, I was still getting people saying I'm getting rashes from your vitamin E. And that's why I switched it over to MCT oil base. Mm-hmm. And so maybe like during a healing phase while someone's ideally, you know, eating a metabolically supportive diet, not restricting carbs, eating animal protein, uh, not skipping breakfast, you know, eating frequently throughout the day to regulate their blood sugar. And then they can start on your bear cream, you know, since they're so sensitive, even to Bulgarian rose oil, 
And then as they heal their metabolism, which I think is the major problem with most people, uh, with their blood sugar going up and down because the PUFA is not the sugar. Once they take care of that issue, then they could start with their rose oil. And I would imagine most people would be able to transition to that, even the, the ultra sensitive ones. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We we always recommend the bear rub first whenever people contact us on like which cream should I use. We always usually recommend the bear rub. If they say their skin isn't sensitive at all, we'll recommend the rose. But definitely to begin with, we we recommend the bear rub. And then we also have those people that reach out to us and they kind of want like a fix all and they think that the cream will just completely fix all their problems. Yeah. But like you said, it's just it's mm-hmm. so internal too. Skin health is really a reflection of every aspect of your life, you know, stress and what you're eating and everything like that. So you know, there's only so much a cream can do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, and in the Q&A, we had a lot of different questions about various different um, different issues. And I'm surprised we didn't get any questions on hair loss because I get that question every day from men. And it's like, for some reason, and I think I know why, there's an epidemic with both men and women with, with uh male pattern baldness and you have just women's hair falling out in their early 20s like 20 years old 21 get messages from when my hair is falling out and i think this is largely caused by by the pufa um thing and and, i mean there's multiple other factors just oxidative stress from iron overload is a Mm -hmm. big one Mm -hmm. Uh, chronic magnesium deficiency just stress i mean uh Mm -hmm. but uh, i look the hair as kind of like a detox mechanism for heavy metals so I mean, the evidence for that is like you take uh, silica and then your hair will actually, hair and nails will grow faster. But in the hair, I mean, that's how they, they do hair mineral uh, analysis tests to see like a snapshot of heavy metals. Um, I, don't, I don't think it's uh, super accurate, but <laughs> it's just wow. interesting to know that this is like detox kind of organs to pull heavy metals out of our brain. Mm-hmm. Uh, wow. So <laughs> that's really interesting. And then you, you think those people that use that shampoo and they're just adding chemicals right to it you know to be absorbed it's definitely not helping the problem yeah um so i want to ask like with the 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 um bear rub body and face cream um what what kind of testimonials have you got like do people just use it uh, like all over do they rub it on their problem areas or um yeah dry skin you mentioned Mm-hmm. Yep. It's great for dry skin. We've gotten a lot of testimonials about just helping with even eczema. Yeah, um, dry patches. Dry she just patches. had someone um, use it for three days and she tried it for three days and immediately she showed it was gone. The dry patch that wow. she had on her arm. So it's it definitely helps with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we also have a woman who's, who's uh, nursing right now with a newborn. Yes. And she's been breastfeeding him very often. Um, and she's saying it's amazing as actually like a nipple cream because when the the newborn is suckling, you know, all like throughout the yeah, day, it, the area it gets tender and it mm-hmm. needs a cream. And so she was really happy to find out that the bear rub literally only has two ingredients. Mm-hmm. And she said it was so different than anything that she went into the drugstore and found. So she was really happy to find that. Yeah. And we also had a testimonial with a woman whose son had autism and um, he would, he would bite his hand often. So she needed a cream Mm -hmm. that was like safe if, you know, small amounts get in the mouth and the bear rub worked great for her because there was no crazy chemicals that could go into his mouth and get into his system. So as Tala was, you know, an, an all natural whole food. So it's it's really amazing tallow it's it's in our in our idea the perfect thing to to put on your skin that's awesome i'll have to use that on my my goats uh <laughs> i'm milking yeah, the goat yeah, twice yeah. a day and getting like half a gallon and so it's pretty i'm out there for like a half hour milking um so i'll try that on the oh, on the definitely. goat's teats yeah definitely mm-hmm. yeah because you get the you get the the punch of the fat soluble vitamins in it and mm-hmm the fatty acids and all that. So that's definitely, really cool. And definitely healing. Sorry, there's a little lag. <laughs> and you said your ta- tallow is uh suet S U E T. What does that mean? Yeah, it's suet. So it's the internal fat around the animal. Um, oh, okay. 
you can you can get trim fat, which is the outer fat of a ruminant animal. Um, that applies to like buffalo, uh, cow, or you know bison. There's trim fat, but then there's the suet fat, which is the internal fat, and that's mainly found found around the kidneys of the animal. And uh, it's shown that the suet fat actually has a higher vitamin content than the trim fat. So we went with the suet fat. It it also smells a lot better. Mm -hmm. Um, It's almost like a butterscotchy smell if you get it from the right source, like a high quality source. It's like a sweet butterscotchy smell. And people are really surprised when they they smell it because, you know, Mm -hmm. you think you're going to walk around smelling like a cheeseburger, but but it's actually the opposite. It, It smells really nice on its own Mm -hmm. yeah that was a lot of the the questions people asked like um let me see if i could find it like how do i make sure you know they're worried about the smell of the tallow but they're probably Mm -hmm. using like the culinary tallow or thinking of that yeah yeah (laughs) yeah and it it really goes back to how it was rendered if if you render it wrong it's going to smell like beefy and cowy but if you do a nice slow and low temp render um, it really comes out a completely yeah, different product good. and also the source as well. If, if you get a high quality mm-hmm. source of tallow with, with cows that are allowed access to pasture and sunlight all day, it really makes a difference in their tallow. Even mm-hmm. visually, it's like, like our tallow is bright yellow. It's, mm-hmm. it's like creamy and buttery. Whereas the tallow you see at the grocery store, it's like chalky and just pure white. So there's definitely a big difference mm-hmm. with grass fed tallow for sure. Yeah. Um, so let's jump into the q and I, I don't think we'll get to all of them, but these are, uh, these are pretty, we got a lot of pretty good questions here. <laughs> let's do it, yeah. So, so uh, one category was about like pH, and um, it's interesting. I kind of have a lot of experience with this because I used to do back in my heavy detox, raw vegan enema days, I was just detoxing daily and doing protocol after protocol. And one of the skin things I was doing is like guasha or washing when it's with a spoon and vodka, you get like Kirkland vodka and then like mix in like baking soda and mm. all these things, <laughs> diatomaceous earth, fulvic. I mean, I would just go crazy and get a, like a shop cloth and then scrub my skin and then like mm-hmm. put coconut oil on and scrape it. I saw some pretty nasty gunk come out. I think it, I think people go a little hardcore on that i think for the face you have to be really careful um but the reason why i bring that up is like uh i think one of the biggest arguments against alcohol on the skin i had some friends message me and say aren't you going to strip the acids off your skin that can't be healthy and um people ask you the soap is great but has a high ph which is not natural or healthy for the skin what are your thoughts um and someone else said a lot of skincare uses acids to help maintain skin and animal mm-hmm. skincare products really replace it's my understanding that the skin will replace the acids like every 12 to 24 hours and, and yeah. that process dependent on diet and so many fat i mean hormones the general health of the body i think determines that acid mantle being yeah. replenished but yeah and tallow does have a high ph when you're talking about its uh, cleansing effect but like tallow soap, for example. But um, when you when you think about cleansing your face, it's such a short time period. You're really just it's only on your face for about four to five seconds. Yeah. Um, and then when you factor in the alternative to using like a mainstream cleanser with all these different preservatives and synthetic chemicals, tallow really is the way to go. And even though it is a higher pH, that's really due to the uh, the fatty acids in it, mm-hmm. the beneficial fatty acids for the skin. Oh, that's awesome. Um, mm-hmm. Someone asked, is melted beef tallow a good option for massage oil? <laughs> yeah, definitely. If it's sourced if it correctly. If it smells good, too. Yeah, if it smells <laughs> if it good smells and it's good. sourced correctly, uh, definitely definitely go for it. Yeah. Awesome. Um, let's see. Dry skin, especially dry hands. I have digestive issues. That could be related. Dry uh, so you're saying the bear, the bear cream. Right. Yeah, I'd yeah, I, I would really recommend the bear re- cream. Recommend that. Um, and can it be applied morning and night? Uh, yeah, it could be applied definitely morning and night. Mm-hmm. The, the key with tallow cream is you don't want to use too much. That's when people mm-hmm. run into problems. It's really made for just 
like a nice light layer and you just want to let it absorb and you could always put another layer on after it absorbs if you really feel the need or if you're in a cold climate and you want that extra protection but one time really really does wonders it's it's extremely hydrating so you only you only, you only need a little bit okay awesome um did I, either of you guys ever experience acne because i got like four or five questions on like natural acne remedies acne scars acne um, stuff yeah cystic acne does this cause acne the tallow all that yeah well when i was a kid i actually had really bad acne and um i actually went on accutane and mm. i looking back i wish i never did that because it's it's a very mm. intense mm -hmm. drug to go on which clears your acne and it's really only supposed to be administered for like the worst of the worst cases yeah and looking back i don't know how i got i was able to get that prescribed to me because my acne wasn't even bad um but i remember my dermatologist at the time was like you got to take this this pill it's like a miracle drug it's you know accutane it'll clear it immediately so uh, of course i was young and took it but looking back i wish i just did a more natural food approach where you can do things like eating beef liver for example with tons of vitamin a that really work wonders on the skin um i would say looking at your diet and trying to remove anything that's that's not really like farm fresh local um just high quality farm food you really want to go for with with tons of fat soluble vitamins a d e and k uh which are all going to help really help your skin and in the way uh your skin looks yeah yeah i fully agree i I saw some benefit um, just jumping into raw veganism for my skin. Like I was like doing like vegetable juicing, like a mm -hmm. reveal juicer, like four or five days a week. And I was juicing like burdock and some interesting stuff. But it, yeah, it wasn't until I added the fat soluble vitamins that I really saw like that glow. I think mm -hmm. where people see the benefit with like green juicing and stuff is the enzymes. But you don't have oh, to really? do that harsh green juice with the inorganic minerals you can just do the enzyme therapy and get the same effect <laughs> i wish oh, i would have knew so that interesting because when we when we were in manhattan there was like so much propaganda with green juicing you like go down the street and there's like billboards of celebrities yeah. holding green juices and that's kind of what sucked me into the whole thing but that wow that's really interesting that you can actually get the same effect with enzyme therapy yeah we all have to go through it i mean there's definitely some vitamins and minerals in there and you know Maybe not all of them are, are inorganic or non-carbon bonded, but people don't really ask, like, are those vegetables grown with tap water? It's like the plants mm -hmm. aren't like this ultra magical filter that creates structured water and blah, blah, blah. Like people say, it's like they're soaking yeah. up tap water and then you're drinking tap water via green juice. It's like <laughs> thrown in yeah. toxic fertilizer. So. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's like what you said. The, I, I heard you uh, a, a comment you wrote about that about like the red and blue pill about how much you want to know and how much you don't want to know and that's kind of what it's about like now i'm even thinking about like what my what my goats are eating and drinking and you know the goats i get my goat milk from and it's just it goes deep and deep and deeper and deeper so the farther yeah. you go the more you know yeah absolutely yeah most goat farmers um give them well water i believe mm -hmm. from what i've seen uh, unfiltered and um, it's usually very hard and it has a lot of iron in it and iron antagonizes copper which is super important for goats and then they need a like copper vitamin e and selenium really interesting like three nutrients that are often deficient in humans um and, and, and yeah, iron kind there's of that, there's, a, there's a connection there for sure <laughs> yeah um someone asked can animal-based skincare be as potent and powerful as current actives on the market such as niacinamide, vitamin C, squalene, hyaluronic acid, like high-tech skin things. <laughs> yeah, like high-tech modern skincare things. Well, I think those are kind of after short-term results. And that's kind of yeah. what the modern skincare, that's why it's so deceiving. Because you try these $100 creams and you do notice a difference at first. You know, you can visually see a difference within the first five minutes of you putting it on your skin. But in terms of like long-term nourishment, uh, the, these products aren't going to give it to you. You really want something like tallow that's completely natural. And because it's bioidentical to your skin, it's just as effective the first time you use it as it is the hundredth time you use it. So 
you know, these high tech treatments, yeah. they're kind of cool short term, but yeah, long term, uh, it's not really, it's not really doable. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. Um, let's see, is emu oil good for the skin? Have you ever looked into that? Yeah, I actually used yeah. emu oil a very long time ago, but to be honest, I, I can't remember what, what was even in it. <laughs> like, I just remember I read some crazy good stuff about it, but I don't know. It could be worth looking into. Yeah, I remember when I was uh, working in a cannabis dispensary years ago, it was uh, someone brought in like emu oil, CBD. We started carrying it. You know, CBD is like such a ridiculous thing now, but <laughs> CBD. Oh, uh, uh... But it was kind of I didn't even know what an emu was before that. And then I had to look it up and like, oh, that's like a strange looking bird. Oh, it's a bird. <laughs> I thought it was like a room. That's my understanding. <laughs> yeah, <it's pretty> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's there's so many uh, different things with skincare. I mean, there's even people saying to put like egg yolks directly on your skin. And I remember when I was first experimenting, I've tried I tried everything. There was even a time when I put cod liver oil directly on my skin, and just smelled like a dead fish. Like, it was just. <laughs> Crazy stuff. So much stuff you could read on the internet. That's funny. Oh yeah, it's really it's really endless. Like mm -hmm. yeah, Google's uh kind of like a black hole, you can just get lost. Yeah. Um do you every everybody seems do you to recommend want quick S fixes. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah, no, I was just gonna yeah. say everybody everybody yeah. wants quick fixes and they just don't want they want something that shows a result within the first minutes of you using it and it's just unrealistic. Yeah, that's the same with like weight loss culture mm -hmm. but like yeah. diet it's like screw my metabolism i just want to lose weight it's mm -hmm. like well cocaine will do it for you but i don't recommend it <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah yeah exactly <laughs> rebound <laughs> yeah um let's see do you recommend spf on your face someone asks i, I have acne scars but don't like to wear it and then someone asks will there be an spf product yeah, we were looking into SPF product uh, products, and we we're debating it, but we didn't we didn't want to get into that territory yet because there's a lot that goes into testing testing it, testing the SPF and everything mm -hmm. like that. But we were, we were debating it. Um, yeah, I, and and as far as like sun protection goes, I I don't really use sunscreen. I really just try to limit myself in the sun, and. Uh, you know, wear long sleeve shirts and hats and things like that. If I'm in the sun over like 20 minutes or 30 minutes to not get burned. But I, I still just don't trust any, uh, any, uh, you know, sunscreens on the market right now. Yeah. A lot of them are like zinc based too. And it's like the whole zinc craze that antagonizes copper, which we need to regulate iron. It's like, Everyone's, yeah, that's crazy. You know, so zinc to... is zinc is actually you you don't recommend zinc as an SPF. As long as I mean, I feel like it's okay as long mm -hmm. as you have a lot of bioavailable copper coming in, like you mentioned, beef liver or bee pollen or whole food C. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And I ideally like all three uh, or at least two of those, but most people are doing none and then yeah. supplementing zinc picolinate or whatever and rubbing, you know whatever on their you know sunscreen zinc based yeah on their skins which is both and everyone's get, pretty yeah. much copper deficient i th i think so it's just like everybody in the summer rubbing this zinc on their skin it's just yeah it's a bad cycle yeah yeah absolutely um let's see what causes white spots when tanning what do white spots mean and how to clear them are they age spots you guys know about that, like white spots on the skin? Yeah, I have noticed that. I, I was a lifeguard for four years in my local town, and I would, I would definitely notice white spots. And even on, you know, my fellow, uh, you know, my friends and lifeguards, I, I commonly saw those white spots. But I, I think it has to do with a lack of hydration, and I think it's mm -hmm. maybe the salt, um, just drying out the skin, causing problems. Um, but in terms of what it is, I, I don't really know exactly what that what that is that that would be my best guess yeah that it has something to do with the salt yeah i'm sure there's like electrolyte component and then fat soluble vitamin deficiency especially mm -hmm. e um, yeah 
Yeah. Let's see here. Um, so we got like a bunch of eczema questions, like chronic eczema, best thing for eczema, best topicals for that, and atopic dermatitis. Um, would you say the bear cream is something to try out? Yeah. Or? Definitely the bear the bear rub cream is something to try out because like we said again even that small amount of rose oil on eczema even though there is might uh uh microbial antimicrobial properties of rose oil it's still we still recommend just a pure product on rose oil to just just not take the chance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. Cool. Sorry, there's a little bit of a delay. so yeah, I'm just going to take this off, too, because it's super high. <laughs> One second. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> okay, so I get super hot in this office because all the heat just, like, goes up to the top of the house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brutal here, too. It's like, I think it's like 85 degrees here today. 90 degrees. Oh, jeez. It's been crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a little cool here. It's like semi raining. Um, okay, we'll jump back in. Uh, three, two, one. Someone says looking through your products and I don't see a toner. Please share why. <laughs> um, a toner is we we kind of <laughs> we we tell people to steer clear of toners yeah. and stuff like that. Um, we we kind of just see it as a little unnecessary, but there are natural really natural uh alternatives to toners because right now on the market there's like pretty intense toners that kind of strip your skin mm-hmm. completely there's a lot of but we even heard like apple cider vinegar is worth looking into as a toner mm-hmm. like a raw apple cider vinegar um yeah I've, I've heard of that in the past but as far as toners go that's kind of all we uh we we looked into uh, we don't feel like it's completely necessary to have it you, you're pretty much good with the cleanser and the moisturizer yeah just washing mm-hmm. very minimal i like minimal yeah that's awesome because i i've seen like skincare lines before and like it's a whole setup and you know before bed you're just doing like four or five steps and it just seems yeah. like really complex mm-hmm. yeah so. yeah <laughs> and it's just yeah exactly not sustainable long term yeah. So do you guys basically just do like before you bed, before bed, do you just kind of wash your face and then put on the the cream? A little or? bit of the moisturizer. Mm-hmm. Yep. I wake up and oh, cool. some days I don't even use a soap to wash my face because I find it's just my face is really dry. So I'll actually just like mm-hmm. wet a damp towel and wipe my face down and that helps like exfoliate the dead skin cells off and cleans the surface of the skin. And then I'll go in with some bear rub. Or really rose, depending on what's closest to me. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's that's really all my skincare is. And I, I think if you have a diet that's really on point, um, your skin your skincare regimen regimen can kind of be really simple and easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely, I agree. Um, this is a good question, kind of going back to absorption. Um, is it true that animal fat has smaller molecules than plant oils and thus is easier to absorb? That animal fats have smaller molecules than plant oils? Uh, that could be it. Um, the, the thing about plant-based moisturizers is they aren't bad, so to say. If you take the time and the due diligence to really mm-hmm. source something that's like cold-pressed and fresh and from a good source... So plant-based moisturizers aren't bad, but at the end of the day, uh, we're, we're mammals, right? And we're not plants. So uh, plant-based moisturizers will never be a perfect molecular, molecular fit to our skin. Um, and I, in my opinion, I don't think plant, plant-based creams will ever have the powerful effect that tallow has with all the fat-soluble vitamins mm-hmm. that just aren't in plants. Yeah, I agree. And there's also the aspect of like, when you use um, plant based oils, and then you go in the sun, um, like like a Mm -hmm. like an oil that's high in polyunsaturated fats that can oxidize with like heat and light. 
I mean, that's compared to tallow, which you can cook with, right? It can withstand yeah. Yeah, like heat, light, yep. and oxygen. Yeah, tallow is extremely shelf stable and has a really high heat point, so it yeah. doesn't oxidize, and it it's kind of the last rancid. thing you want to put on your skin when you're talking, you know, putting like free radicals on your skin using a plant based cream. It's kind of the last thing you want to do when you want anti aging benefits and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, this is a good one because we talked about like absorption earlier. Um, someone said, I assume tallow creams would block the pores due to the high fat content. Is there any truth to this? But you say it just goes in. The trick is just not using a lot, right? Maybe they're using too much. Yeah, the trick is not using a lot. And that's actually a common misconception is people think fat, imagine putting fat on your skin and it just smothers your pores, but that's mm -hmm. so untrue. Um, if, if you thought that it's like thinking that your own sebum will clog your pores. Because tallow in Latin actually means, or sorry, sebum in Latin actually means tallow in English. So, you know, you're, it's like thinking what your skin is already using to hydrate its skin, to, to hydrate your skin will, will clog your pores because tallow is no different than, yeah. than sebum. It's like putting high quality sebum on your face pretty much. Yeah, and it actually scores low on the comedogenic level, whereas coconut oil scores high. So that's really important to point out. That's usually what you look for when a product is going to clog your pores. You want it to be on the lower, and tallow is on the lower scale. So yeah, yep. you don't have to worry about that. Yeah, a lot of people use coconut oil, mm -hmm. and that's like a. I think that scores like a four out of five. Five yeah, being pretty high. Five being very likely to clog your pores, mm -hmm. and one being very unlikely. Um, so coconut oil is like a four, and tallow is actually like a two. So it. Uh, that's that's a really common misconception. Yeah, and a good question though. That's really interesting. What was, the, what was that scale called again? I've never heard of that. It's called the non-comedogenic scale. You can actually Google it, and it's you could see like every type of oil, whether it's mm -hmm. plant or animal based, how likely it is to clog your pores. And tallow is like a two, coconut oil is like a four. So, yeah, it's it's actually the opposite of what a lot of people think. That's really cool. Um, someone asked how to get rid of blackheads that have been there forever due to enlarged pores. I just know of those strips. I don't know if those are good or bad. <laughs> yeah, I, I think those strips would be worth looking into. Clogged pores. I, I think it has to do with yeah. dead skin cells, really, because I would recommend using a towel and just wiping it down, something natural, something without chemicals to, to um you know, perpetuate the problem, just using a towel, wiping down your face, getting rid of the dead skin cells, um, and then using some type of natural moisturizer. I love it. Um, what do you think of face products with beeswax? A face products with beeswax. I, n I never got into those really. Uh, someone asked when first using the cream, um, is it normal to break out if you're not used to it? Um, or do you think again they're just maybe using a little too much of it or yeah the, that that could be an issue they could be using too much of it at first because you really just want to put enough for it to soak in and yeah. I'm talking like less than a pea size amount um, and and trying it and you know sl slow and steady you don't want to put way too much on it first and at the end of the day it, it is a new product you're putting yeah. on your skin so whenever you try something new you want to go in slow um, and it's worth trying the bear rub first. If, if you have any negative reactions with the rose, definitely, definitely go to the, go towards the, uh, the bear rub and try that it's worth trying. Yeah. And I think that a lot of people have a misconception, like, I mean, this is similar to having allergic reactions, like, let's just say to like dairy and like raw milk. Um, people will think that it's actually the milk that's the problem but it's actually their uh, suppressed metabolism that's the issue. Um, and mm -hmm. their, immu uh, their immune issues um, from a sluggish liver causing the, all these crazy allergic reactions where that's a sign of imbalance. In the body you shouldn't mm -hmm. have tons of allergies. And I believe allergies mm -hmm. are completely uh, remediable. Uh, they can be completely reversed. And so I just want to point that out because it doesn't mean it's your product. It's likely that what you know, there, I mean, it could be vitamin E deficiency, vitamin K2 deficiency. There's so many aspects that can influence how their body reacts 
Yeah, 100%. It's so up to the individual, I think, and every case is so different. So it's really about reflecting on what you're currently doing and seeing if there's a problem you need to fix or some type of imbalance. Yeah. Yeah, I think like my, not to plug, but my Mitolife vitamin E and the K2 would be a good mix with your mm -hmm. cream. Like I think that would be like a pretty good program. And if someone can do the Shiela G too, just like the minerals and yeah. fat soluble vitamins. Yeah. Yeah, we were even thinking about like, is a Shiela G cream possible? Yeah, but... we were thinking about that. <laughs> Making a mask. I don't know. Totally. <laughs> like a Shiela G mask or something. Totally. I, I would use it. We'll That's see. awesome. <laughs> uh Got a question about soap making. Like, what's the process of making the soap? All I see is tallow and water. It baffles me. So I think in the beginning you were talking about the lye that's used up yeah. in the processing. So that's kind of what holds it together, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The lye Becomes, reacts with yeah. the oils and the tallow, and that creates the soap. So they just see tallow and water, and you think you're just like, it's just fat. But yeah. there's actually a chemical process that goes on in soap making, and it's long... Yeah, it's called, the technical term is, uh, what is it? Saponification. Saponification, yeah. yeah. So if, if you Google saponification, you'll, you'll see the whole process. And it takes four to six weeks. We always let our bars cure for six weeks just to be completely safe, make sure there's no lye left over. But mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's really how our ancestors made it. It's completely it's, natural. Yeah, it's the only way to make it, and it's really good. Mm-hmm. I wonder if that's similar to like homogenization with milk, like mixing mm -hmm. like the fat yeah, and, the, yeah. and the water together. Yeah, yeah. Sounds similar. Um, I, I, my mind's blown that sebum in Latin means tallow in English. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the whole beauty of tallow. It's like it's exactly bioidentical to your skin. I mean, it's really mind-blowing when you think about it. It's like if nature could produce the most perfect thing to put on your skin – it would be tallow, <laughs> but yet people are still buying mainstream things with 30 plus ingredients. It's just, I, I can't believe tallow isn't more mainstream because I, I hope one day it catches on to where it's like the new, the new coconut oil or something. Yeah. And I, I mean, I've often thought about like, maybe it's better too if certain things don't become mainstream because then it usually gets like perverted and twisted. Um, like I, I saw that with tobacco where like people aren't smoking pure tobacco. They're smoking, you know, almost like over 20,000 chemicals, you know, and menthol and all this weird stuff. It's not pure <laughs> anymore. And uh, same thing with alcohol. Yeah. I mean, they're mixing with all this other poison and synthetics. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You make a good point. It might be better <laughs> that it just stays small farmers to not contaminate it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I'm i a big fan of, like, homesteads, and we're doing our best here, and, like, small family farms, and, uh, I mean, there's certain companies, like Dr. Cowan's powders, like, source, like, uh, biodynamic, or, like, really high-grade uh, vegetables, like, uh, making the powders, and there's certain certain companies that can, like, source from small farms and sell it, you know, nationwide and stuff, but yeah, yeah, I think I at some level companies. there's a cap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I want to source a good coffee company like that, if you know any, that really just source high quality coffee directly from the source and not mess I with it. I have some people. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. Let's send them our way. Sure. <laughs> um, what's the shelf life for tallow? Um, it's well over a year, actually. It's so shelf, mm -hmm. shelf stable, and that's why it's been used for so many centuries and and all different things like chefs love it to cook with it because it never goes bad really and uh it has natural antimicrobial properties that keep it shelf stable and it we've noticed it's last lasted well mm -hmm. over a year i would say 12 to 18 months yeah we, we tell our customers 12 to 18 months and if you refrigerate it it's almost it, even it stays longer. good indefinitely awesome you like put it in an egyptian tomb it'll last forever <laughs> yep yeah it's really really crazy good stuff it's just there's so many benefits to it yeah someone asked uh speaking of egyptian tombs is honey beneficial for acne topically i think i tried that like once in my life and it was just a mess it's like hard to work with <laughs> yeah, yeah i i agree with that but it is pretty good because it is antibacterial so 
it would be good for acne in that way, but it, it does become a mess. That's why I've, I haven't used it as much. And I've heard of like honey masks and things mm -hmm. like that. Um, but yeah, like you said, I don't know how long term it would, how long term it, it could be for your skin doing that daily and stuff like that. It, it mm -hmm. does sound messy. So this is a good question. Does topical skincare really make a difference in the long run? <laughs> I guess it depends on how long you want to live, right? Are you going for like 150 or 200? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I don't, yeah, that, that's, that's a good question. I think it could depend on a lot of different factors. Um, but like, I mean, our ancestors, you know, I don't think they had crazy skin issues and stuff. I think diet is really where it's at and Hey, putting on some tallow on your skin, I, I don't think it'll, I don't think it'll hurt. Yeah. And I think, uh, like our ancestors weren't dealing with a lot of the issues that we're faced with today, like, um, acid rain and just post-industrial revolution and, um, increased UV light coming through for whatever reason. I don't believe in global warming or the CO2 garbage, but just, we have a lot of, we have a different environment today than what they had. I mean, just oh, air totally. pollution. Totally. Just so much more stress too, which can trigger so many different types of internal reaction. Mm -hmm. 100%. Yeah, definitely. Um, let's see if we have any others that might be, um, I guess just for aging, what is anti-aging for the neck area <laughs> and best way to slow the aging process as far as wrinkles, how to stay looking young? We've it's been looking into vitamin E a lot lately, yeah. topically for anti-wrinkle um, and anti-aging benefits. So that's kind of motivating us for our next cream to be vitamin E enriched. Um, but I would say even tallow is great. You yeah. can bring the tallow to the neck area as well. I, that's what I do every night because tallow itself has a lot of fatty acids. And as you get older, you kind of decrease those fatty acids. So I would just bring it to the neck. Um, you can put it all over. I put it all over my body like yeah. every night. Yeah. And uh, grass fed beef actually is found to have, I think, four times the amount of vitamin E than grain fed beef. Yeah. So that's oh. worth noting. There's definitely fat soluble vitamins in tallow, so it's you could use it anywhere. That's cool. Yeah, and I think uh, the context too that people might need to understand is with uh, like even though fat soluble vitamins are stored, I've heard like vitamin D is stored in the liver for like ten years, um, or you know all A, D, E, and K they're all stored in the liver, uh, and it just soaks them up. But no one ever thinks about uh, the burn rate, like with uh, magnesium or copper, using these nutrients up, like for vitamin A, just retinol alone, you need that to um, make thyroid hormone or to um, activate copper and to uh, have a ceruloplasmin enzyme with copper. And so we can like actually use up fat soluble vitamins, and depending on someone's stress level, if they have a lot going on, divorce, move, job change, whatever it is, mm -hmm. arguments, traffic. Then their vitamin and a that sounds like it's like done on the daily. Uh -huh. I mean, everyone experiences that type of stress daily. So, it, geez, yeah, you really think about the burn rate and the, the fact that it's just compounding every day. Mind blowing. Yeah, yeah, I think it, it makes sense to me to replenish the body uh, internally with animal foods and externally, since your skin will absorb um, all that goodness too that way. So. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, awesome. I think that's pretty good. Um, let's see. Dry, flaky, and itchy scalp. You ever had any any people ask about that? <laughs> itchy scalp? Um, I, I would think that's an internal problem. I, I would really yeah. look at the diet and upping the fat-soluble vitamins. I've even heard people say, like, raw egg yolks eating them often helps with their dry flaky skin yeah a lot of uh, it is just it's a dry scalp as well dry and scalp. you could put tallow there too just a little bit and yeah. mix it in we've had we've customers had people do that <laughs> mm -hmm. we've had customers put tallow in their hair so it's really good anywhere but i i do think that you know it's dry itchy scalp and stuff i think that's more of an internal diet problem mm -hmm. right on awesome well um 
I think that's that's it for uh, for today's show. That was awesome. Is there anything else that uh, we didn't talk about that you guys want to mention, or do you think we covered covered it all? I think we covered it all. Yeah, that's really the the gist of it. It's just that the modern skincare industry really doesn't have your health in mind. It's more about profit and mass production and how much money they can make. So it's just just really be mindful of, yeah. of everything you're putting on your skin and really be curious about what's on the label and what it actually means. I love it. That's awesome. And uh, the website's fancyfarmskincare.com, right? Yep. Yeah, fancyfarmskincare.com. You can see all of our products there. Awesome. Yeah, and I like the t the FAQ. You actually have a lot of the answers to the questions from the Q and A. Will tallow clog my pores? Is tallow good for eczema? What will it smell like? Yeah, yeah. I totally How forgot I about that. Them? Yeah, they could just go on the website. Yeah, yeah, our FAQs. We have we have a lot of answers to com uh, common questions. And if you reach out to us, we're always responsive. If you go yeah. on the website, you can hit contact us at the bottom, and we'll we'll answer immediately. It actually comes right to my phone. So. Cool. And you even have um, the articles are really great, too. You have a, a section on Bulgarian Rose, uh, Absolute Oil, and um, Benefits of Tallow. Yeah, mm -hmm. good stuff. So um, right on. Yeah, well, just uh, keeping it simple. I love that. Um, awesome. Well, Michael and Andrea, thanks so much for, for your time and uh, coming on the show. And uh, stick around while I close it out. Awesome. Thank you, Matt. Thanks for having Thank us. You. Well, that's it for today's show. I love the statistics that they shared. 19 out of 20 women had five different parabens stuck in their body. That's not good. Estrogen dominance, excess estrogen is such an issue right now, especially in the context of excess polyunsaturated fat stored in the body, omega-3s in particular, and excess iron from the drinking, bathing water, and the vegetables. So we really have to be aware of what we're putting on our skin, the water that we're bathing in, at the very least have a shower filter. It still blows my mind that people are in the health community and they're showering in tap water that's a big problem but their soap and their skin cream are just amazing the rose one i love it smells really really good and there are quite a few q a questions that we didn't have time for so i just wanted to quickly go through those and give my thoughts First one was dandruff every single day and scalp issues. What do you recommend? So speaking of excess estrogen, dandruff is one of those symptoms of excess estrogen. And so I've heard people have success with putting aloe vera on their head. I have a product on my website that's super clean. Um, you could use for that. I've heard of people seeing benefit from methylene blue and just taking that orally. When I think of estrogen, my thought immediately goes to vitamin E and vitamin E therapy. I have a vitamin E supplement with MitoLife and that directly opposes estrogen. So just taking three to four capsules a day, if I had dandruff, that's what I would do and see if that resolves it. And there could be a fungal component as well. So stacking that with some North American Urban Spice, Super Strength, Wild Oregano Capsules, or the Juice of Oregano, or just the Oil Straight could be beneficial as well. How to handle and heal spider veins. I would tackle that with systemic enzyme therapy, vitamin E, and red light therapy. I would hit those spider veins directly with red lights. I have Gemba Red on my website. You can find good companies out there that are affordable. And the systemic enzymes, the proteolytic enzymes, my dissolve it all supplement for MitoLife actually dissolves scar tissue, excess fiber and accumulation in the body. 
so with spider veins, there's always a fibrosis, and the vitamin E uh, just increases circulation overall. So that would be a good thing, uh, what I would do if I had uh, spider veins. Another question is psoriasis. What is the real cause? Best diet for psoriasis? What food should I avoid? So according to Google or the Mayo Clinic, psoriasis is a skin disorder, an autoimmune disorder, and supposedly there's no solution, no long-term solution to get rid of it. I believe that to be incorrect. I know that there's uh, tons of social media groups and forums all revolving around just this condition alone. I designed a protocol called the CLF protocol, which is made to address the foundational obstructions to cellular energy production. So my brand MitoLife is all about the mitochondria and not only just increasing energy production, but just starting with allowing oxygen to get to the cell to be used as that terminal electron acceptor to pull electrons across the chain to generate adenosine triphosphate. You actually need to remove obstructions for that to happen. And those obstructions are calcification, lipofuscin, and fibrosis. That's my CLF protocol. And I have a blog on this on my Matt-Blackburn website. Psoriasis is a complex condition in that there are multiple factors coming together. I would say that most people with psoriasis have a suppressed metabolism. They don't have a healthy metabolism. They might have done keto or fasting or various different protocols, or they could have not, could just be uh, environmental uh, toxicity that, that caused it over a long period of time. But usually there's an endotoxin component. My CLF protocol addresses that with my MitoLife spore-based probiotics. Uh, there's always going to be a, a fibrosis component whenever you have uh, chronic inflammation, especially systemic inflammation, which systemic enzymes can help with, natokinase and serapeptase. That's the MitoLife Dissolve It All product. Uh, there's likely a vitamin E deficiency and PUFA overload there. And I would say there's a 100% chance of iron overload or excess iron. So getting the full Monty panel, listening to my podcasts on iron, because iron definitely affects the skin and the immune system and the nervous system and all the bodily systems. And after all of that, I would say if you want to stack it, you could do wild oregano p73 and a daily sauna session like with the relaxed saunas that i have on my website and i interviewed uh, the, the founder of that company i have heard of people using uh, ciproheptadine uh, even in combination with bromocryptine there's a 1984 study on that from italy and that can be useful as a last ditch effort but i would say that before someone gets to that point, just get the basics down. Drinking and bathing water. Are you bathing in tap water? Are you drinking pristine water? You know, kind of figure those things out. Uh, CLF protocol, and um, that's that's what I would do if I had psoriasis. Uh, someone asked, why should someone take Accutane? I should say they shouldn't. Uh, Mike had a pretty interesting story in this episode about that i would say just do beef liver for the vitamin a let's see other questions best eye cream what should women use i would say theirs is an awesome one um, and the white spots just circling back to that are they age spots uh, there's various different forms of lipofuscin like over 80 forms of it maybe you've run over 100 and so could be anything. I would say just do the basics for skin health, and that's largely uh, retinol is vitamin A in animal foods, uh, vitamin E, and red light therapy. Someone asked what to use on brown spots 
on the face. Those are most likely age spots, liver spots, lipofuscin. So people have used alcohol on those. Um, people have used aspirin, like make a paste out of aspirin, put it on there, and vitamin E. So those three things uh, topically can help uh, fade those. And I would also say high dose vitamin E orally. If I was dealing with that, I would take uh, four to eight of the current uh, PUFA Protect uh, product, which is D alpha tocopherol. And internally, vitamin E can do wonders. Someone asked, I've been battling ringworm on my skin and face. Using pristine water, oregano, what else helps? I would definitely hit it topically with the oregano if you haven't yet. Uh, North American Urban Spice makes various creams and oregano-based creams. Uh, they have a chocolate cream and then an oregano P73 cream that's kind of in the same bottle as the uh, Sinu Orega spray. And you could try um, both of those I would say probably the oregano uh, first and see what that does. Uh, someone asked, can you explain the moon-like crests on the fingernails? <laughs> this is in regard to a, a Instagram little story that I did. Basically, if you have moons on your fingernails, that means that you have B vitamins. And so you're eating sufficient animal products that includes milk and red meat, all of that good stuff, cheese. And if someone has no moons, um, especially on their index fingers, that means that there's a severe uh, B complex deficiency. And so really uh, nutrient dense things like beef liver, uh, royal jelly, maybe even bee pollen mixed with honey, make that bee bread and just take these concentrates and that should help over time. Then I had a question, how to heal from poison sumac on the foot. Uh, this is a rash that takes uh, up to weeks to develop on the foot. I would use those oregano creams that I mentioned and um, see if that helps to uh, alleviate it. There's also a uh, Shen Blossom. He has some really good uh, topical blends that are uh, very broad acting. So I would check those out. So that's it for the show. Uh, FancyFarmSkincare.com if you want to buy their products. I have a discount code BLACKBURN10 and you save 10% on any other products. They're already affordably priced. And if you're listening to this uh, around the 4th of July, they're actually having a sale. So they're already discounted. It's an incredible deal. And they have two and four ounce jars of their face creams. And then they have their tallow soap, which I highly, highly recommend. It's all that we use here. And if you want to support my work and the show, you can go to matt-blackburn.com. That's where I have all of my recommended products. The Really Rose Face Cream is up there. And all of the products that I use on a pretty much daily basis are up on the site. There's also mitolife.co, and that's my brand. I have enzyme products, a dairy supplement called Dairy Absorb to help your body break down dairy. If you're just getting back into it, recovering from veganism or something like that, or a restrictive diet, I also have systemic enzymes, which can be used for systemic enzyme therapy or just for maintenance, uh, for regeneration after an injury. There's just so many applications with systemic enzymes. So I have a product called Dissolve It All that's amazing. I get awesome testimonials from that. And that is a cornerstone of my CLF protocol. I also have vitamin E that's in a base of pure MCT oil. Uh, most vitamin E supplements you find are in a PUFA oil, whether it be soybean oil or sunflower oil. So mine's an MCT oil. I personally high dose it, and I've been doing that for several years now, and I've only seen a benefit from that. So vitamin E therapy has been suppressed. It's incredible internally to help externally regenerate the skin it's visible i get amazing testimonials from people that their skin overall improves in health just from supplementing vitamin e and not being scared away by uh, the google searches 
about uh, vitamin E therapy. I also have Panacea uh, Pure Shilajit tablets that is awesome to take with your milk or with your coffee. And a new vitamin K27 supplement, which is really amazing for healing the mitochondria. It addresses at least five various other different problems with mitochondria, the little power plants of the cell, and it will go in and fix it. And it actually acts like coenzyme Q10. It's a quinone. So it's involved in energy production. And the metaquinone 7 is the one that really does a lot. There's MK4 that's easy to get in animal foods, and there's MK7 that's only in aged cheese or in natto, which is fermented soy. So if you're waiting for that product, that will be back next week, and you can sign up uh, on the website. Just put in your email, and you'll get a notification when that's back in stock. So thanks for listening. If you enjoyed the show, please share it with your friends. Uh, Leave a review on iTunes, and I will see you next week. Today's quote is by Frederick Haberman from the book Your Skin. Stress usually acts on the skin indirectly via the neuroendocrine system, which involves both the nerves and the glands. Many skin disorders can be traced to infections, allergies, or hormone imbalances, and chronic stress may be at the root of all three. For example, the levels of thyroid, adrenaline, steroids, and sex hormones in your body are subject to fluctuations in emotions and mood. Since these natural chemical messengers collectively influence skin color, tone, elasticity, oil gland activity, circulation, hair growth, and new cell production, any radical change among them can have a telling impact on the way you look.